Saint-Emilion in southwest France is a World Heritage Site 20 miles from Bordeaux, famous for its wine production. France's famous golfing family, the Morgue d'Algues, are also looking to put the area on the sporting map with a new golf resort designed by architect Tom Doak. Yes, we're very keen on golf and uh, of course it's a family project so we all got involved in the decision and, uh, and uh, we are happy to, to do a real golf, what they call a real golf, where you can play fast, where it's not too difficult, when you can enjoy, have a good time, a good experience on the golf course. The project lay stagnant for many years, but the family hoped to open the first nine holes next summer. We got this project uh, started uh, last year, so about a, for a year and a half, and uh, we have accomplished many different tasks, uh, clearing the land, and getting, of course, a great architect like Tom Doak on site and having him involved. So we are getting now nine holes ready. The appointment of Doak was crucial in getting the course back on track and ready for golfers to play. This project has a long history. You know, people have been thinking about building a golf course on it for 20 years or more, which, which is, I guess, pretty common in Europe. I mean, the permitting process here is pretty involved, so a lot of times the architect that starts with the project doesn't wind up being the one that builds it. With over 30 courses under his belt, including the stunning Pacific Dunes in Oregon, Tom trained under the legendary Pete Dye and is excited to be finally working in mainland Europe. I love Europe. I've had a chance to travel over here a bunch. Um, you know, we just, we didn't want to get involved in Europe until we found a project that felt right for us to do. Um, and that means something where you don't have to tear up the world in order to build a golf course and where the land is pretty much sitting there ready to go, where we don't have to, you know, every course you have to build the greens and bunkers. But you, you know, a lot of modern golf courses, they build the fairways and then there's no natural character left at all. So we look for land that we can pretty much leave the fairways at grade the way they are now. Course design is his passion, and Tom is happy to muck in with the work. What we're flagging out now is the lines for the fairway cut on the, on the hole so that, you know, we have an irrigation plan that shows approximate spacing of sprinkler heads, but everything's changed while we were building the golf course in terms of width of fairway, maybe shifted over to the right or the left a little bit. I mean, I could leave this to my associates to do, but it helps to do it at least on the first three or four holes to give them the sense. And, and you know, we're still working out well, how wide do we want the fairways to be here? So if I do it on a few holes, uh, everybody gets more confident in what we've got going and then they can take it from there. With the changing world economy, Tom and his crew find themselves increasingly working outside their native US shores. Certainly we're, we're working further from home than we did five years ago. Um, that's just the nature of the business right now. So, so to stay doing two or three courses at a time instead of having them all close together in the United States, right now I'm working in China, New Zealand and France. He's also thrilled to be looking after his idol, Alistair McKenzie's gem in Melbourne, Australia. We're consultants to 25 or 30 clubs, mostly in the States, but, you know, Royal Melbourne was a place I've been going for years, and when they asked me if I'd consider consulting there, that was just a hard job to turn down, because I love that golf course. His passion for the game made Tom a perfect fit for the project in saint Emilion. He likes what he does and uh, he commits to it and he has a team that comes with him that is uh, really, I would say, first class and they are, I think, all golfers, they love golf and that's also very important, I think. They also like their fine wines, so a week in the French wine capital hasn't been too much of a hardship. New Zealand was not a bad place to work. We did a little project in Napa a few years ago, which is a pretty nice place to work. We're having fun here. 